So about a year ago to date, I made this video where I talked about why I was selling my Fuji GA645. I'm gonna talk to you guys about, but it also has a few negatives that are just making me feel like maybe there's something else that's out there for me. I decided to make that video because at the time I was frustrated with a few things and those few things actually led me to believe that the best decision was to sell it. And I regret it so much to the point where I now own this camera again. So I thought I would make a video talking about why I decided to sell it in the first place and why I decided to buy this camera back. So after selling this camera, I thought that I could easily replace it with one of my 35 millimeters. So either my Nikon L35 AF or my Voigtlander Vesa R or even my Olympus XA. But I quickly realized that I was taking the medium format quality for granted. Although my 35 millimeter cameras are extremely sharp, when I would wanna take them in different Different scenarios and I would take pictures for some reason the sharpness and the quality just didn't give me what my medium format was giving me but I do think that when it comes to us photographers sometimes we tend to be extremely picky with what we like and I can be really picky and so if I was very used to looking at my pictures in one way and then out of nowhere I can no longer recreate that same emotion and that same feeling then I start to have a problem one of the biggest reasons why I decided to sell this camera in the first place last year was because of the focusing. I would constantly miss focus over and over and over. Come to find out almost a couple of months later, I met up with somebody who has a Fuji GA and someone who works at my local film shop and he was honestly giving me some really good pointers how to avoid missing focus as much as I did. And then I started to really think about the fact that did I give myself enough time to truly learn the camera to where I wouldn't make as many mistakes as I was currently making. Number two, it was one of my first intros to a sort of a rangefinder camera. Uh, I would always have my lens cap on on accident and I would take tons of pictures that just ended up turning out black and I guess it was just a hump that I didn't want to get over but it was just so dumb third reason was the camera is extremely loud Now, I do like to take my camera out in public and randomly sometimes I will shoot crowd or, or things that are in the street and I don't want people to hear that. But then again, I started to think about me as a photographer. I'm a portrait photographer first, not a street photographer. So that was one of the reasons maybe that was just kind of like a stretch. Lastly, the quality. I, I took the quality for granted, truthfully and honestly. I didn't realize how sharp and how amazing these photos were until I couldn't produce them anymore. I didn't want to carry around my Mamiya 645 everywhere because it's literally a million pounds and who wants to have that with you when you're out to dinner with some friends or in the middle of a nightclub. It's not the ideal camera. So I thought that this camera wasn't as sharp as it could be when in fact it was absolutely amazing. Another thing is that although it is a rangefinder camera, it's a very clear viewfinder. I think it's pretty easy to read. I think it has all the information that you need and the frame lines are perfect to let you know exactly what's in focus and what is being taken a picture of. After selling it, I quickly realized that my 35 millimeter cameras weren't really giving me the quality images that I wanted. And I think the most important lesson that I learned was that when it comes to film photography, when it comes to taking pictures, and when it comes to getting used to a new film camera, it takes time. This was one of the earlier stages of my film journey. And I honestly can say I'm guilty of being so used to the digital camera and that instant gratification that making these small errors and these mistakes was honestly frustrating and it wasn't something that I was used to. With the Fuji GA645, I'm going to be taking a lot more pictures than I already have and I'm going to do a full and extensive review in the upcoming months. I think that this camera is truthfully a great buy but it does have a learning curve so if you're not ready to get used to using another camera then maybe you shouldn't go for it but if you are interested in having a medium format point and shoot with amazing flash that's fully automatic this is definitely probably the best camera and I think the only camera that does it all 
and it's by far going to be a camera that I keep in my collection for a while and I will not be making the mistake of selling it again. Some of my favorite photographers have used this camera on their channels and I've loved the images that have come out of it and it has honestly motivated me to keep striving to get even better images every time that I use it. I guess that kind of brings us to the end of this video where I talked a little bit about why I sold it and why it was dumb and why I bought it again. But I will be doing a full and extensive review on this camera, but I just wanted to quickly make a video to just tell you guys um, the learning curve is with every film camera. Get used to it because it's going to be something that's probably going to happen over and over again. And if you do get your hands on a camera like this, the camera is phenomenal. It's a medium format point and shoot, fully automatic, and I think it's definitely worth the price. I really appreciate it if you made it this far in this video. I am trying to continue to strive on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I appreciate all the support. So if you can, please leave a comment and a like down below. And until the next one, peace.